Hey guys, what is up, and I welcome all of you to a new episode of the League of Myths series. If you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button. But going into the first myth, will Cass's E work off of Gromp's poison shield buff? If you're unfamiliar, whenever you smite Gromp, the big frog that you see on the screen, that champion gains a shield that will poison anyone that attacks him. So Elise does have the buff, and normally Cass's E will reset its cooldown if it attacks a poison target. Now usually the poison is coming from Cassiopeia herself, and this can work with things like Singe's poison as well. So there you saw me use the E on the blue buff and the cooldown was not reset. But as the Elise comes in and starts tanking the blue buff and putting the poison on it, I am now able to use my E, and you can see the cooldown of the E is instantly refreshing. This is actually quite interesting, because maybe this can make Jungle Cassiopeia quite a strong pick due to the fast clear speed. The second myth is asking, what is the interaction with Rek'Sai and Kalista Ultimate? So this one is actually quite interesting. I'm sure most of you are expecting for Rek'Sai to travel across the map and then instantly come right back into Kalista because of the ultimate. But that is actually not the case. So here as the Rek'Sai charges up her ultimate, she instantly dashes across the map, but she does not come back to Kalista. And what's more, my friend while we're testing this ended up telling me his cooldown on the ultimate instantly refreshed as you see him come right back. So after that happened, I'm like, alright, I need to see this from my own perspective. So we switched champions on the Rek'Sai now, he ults me as I ult across the map, and looking at my skills, you can see the cooldown on my ultimate is suddenly refreshed and I'm able to use it once again. Whether this is a bug or intended behavior is still yet to be found out. But we decided to test one more thing. What if Kalista is standing somewhere halfway through Rek'Sai's travel path on her ultimate? Is Kalista still able to activate her ultimate while the Rek'Sai jolts right past her since normally she is untargetable? And as it happens I channel my ultimate, run right past the Kalista and her ultimate does go off because you can also see my ultimate suddenly resets its cooldown and I use it once again. So definitely some interesting behavior. The next myth is asking, is it possible to hop over any kinds of terrain with Callista's passive? So Callista's passive whenever she auto attacks or uses her Q will make her dash to a certain area and you can choose this area by using the right click. The cool thing about it is the fact that you can go over certain walls within Summoner's Rift. Now I'm not going to be showing every single wall that you can or cannot, but this will give you a rough idea. Certain walls are just simply too thick like this one at the Wraiths, but the very thin walls and including the ones at Dragon and Baron are possible, but they are quite difficult. It's really easy to mess up a lot of these except for the really thin ones like that one right there or this one at Blue Buff as well. So make sure to practice these quite a few times, especially the wall in your base. This one is super difficult. The next myth is asking, if Janna shields Azir's tower and it kills a champion, who gets the credit? So the cool thing about Janna's shield is that on top of her being able to cast it on a tower giving it increased HP and damage, if that turret with the shield ends up picking up a kill, Janna will get the kill credit for it as if she did all the damage. But as we test it with Azir's passive where he can make his own turret, it does not seem to give Janna any form of bonuses for killing an enemy champion, not even an assist. And the final myth of this episode is asking, can Yasuo use his ultimate on champions that are knocked back by the new dragon? The old Baron used to have his own knockup, but Yasuo was unable to use his ultimate off of Baron's knockup. And the new dragon now has its own knockback, but the cool thing is Yasuo is able to use his ultimate off of Dragon's knockback. So if you are a Yasuo player, this is something you might want to remember to set up some pretty cool plays. Alright guys, that unfortunately does mark the end of this episode of League of Myths. You can have a chance to be featured in the next episode, just submit a myth either underneath this video, on my Twitter, or on my Facebook fan page, both Red Mercy LOL. Also check out the previous episodes of this series and check out my other videos as well. But I hope you guys did enjoy it, and hope to see you for the next video. Peace.